Hello everybody. Um, so I've been thinking a little bit about the stock market and um, basically pretty sick of it. So wanted to take a look at currency um, and try to. Sometimes what happens is that I get uh, kind of focused on a particular company and then I realize, man, I just need to think about the entire economy and then it's, you know, S&P 500 or then, and then now I just wanted to take a look at the currency situation globally so it's a little bit late at night and uh, the stock markets are closed in the United States uh, but uh, currency is being traded and I just highlighted uh, this here but basically 6.6 .6 trillion dollars are traded per day um, and that is up about 1 trillion dollars uh, from 2016 um, so that's quite a lot of money um, one-sixth of the total money so there's even more money being traded um, kind of see there's different kind of definitions of what uh, so not a whole lot of options uh, and then there's just these spot transactions uh, right forwards and you can look these all up to understand them um, but what I did is I basically did some graphs here so uh, you can see that uh, most people about 88 percent of these transactions are with the dollar um, so these numbers are actually times by two because it's uh, uh you can kind of think about it uh, but basically uh the euro is uh, the number two and that surprisingly is about 30 percent of all those transactions um and of some sort either buy or sell and that's why it's basically so it's like half of these for the buy or half of these for the sell um, so anyway, so the Japanese uh, currency is used a lot, even more than the uh, British currency. And these two islands are about the same size. Um, and you can see Australia uh, is uh, pretty big, as well as Canada and the Swiss franc. Now, the interesting thing here is you start to get into these uh, smaller lots. Uh, but it's uh, when we study this, basically one of the interesting things is that well, uh, these are not small countries. These are huge countries, right? So this is China, right? And you have Hong Kong being traded almost as much as the uh, RMB. Uh, so, and uh, they call it the yuan as well. Um, I guess it's late at night. I might yawn a little bit here, but, uh, but anyway, so if you take a zoom in and you look at this, you can kind of see uh, China being in the second half and honestly I don't really trust these numbers at all and I'll kind of give you some uh, reasons why uh, but basically uh, so what's going on here is after China then there's like a whole another group here New Zealand South Korea and uh, well Swedish currency sorry uh, Singapore Norwegian and Mexican peso so some of these are certainly more interesting and you might find certain ones more interesting than what I have found um, but I'm certainly interested in certain areas um, so I definitely want to take a look at the big currencies with a lot of people and also take a look at the big currencies with uh, certainly a lot of transactions so we're gonna basically look at this from the perspective of the dollar um, it would be also super interesting to do this whole entire study again and compare each one of these to the euro um, or even the uh, RMB or even Indian rupee or even Brazilian currency or Russian in particular but these are all lesser traded but that doesn't mean that they're not interesting and it looks like I accidentally pressed the key here um, so you got some cool little symbols here for each of the currencies if you're interested in the currency symbol um, and basically if you get down to this uh, this class here you can kind of see uh, now this would be super interesting because of Thailand. Oops, I accidentally pressed another key. Gotta be careful about this. Um, but you can see uh, Thailand being uh, significant uh, here and uh, well, Polish currency being used here a little bit more. Uh, and uh, there goes my refrigerator. I guess uh, food is maybe becoming a currency but anyway uh the philippine peso so certain ones of these i'm super interested because either i'm interested in traveling there or even making just friends over the internet uh with some of these people but you can see a malaysian currency and romanian and some others so and then you get even down to these smaller percentages and you can kind of see oh this is actually more percentages so this is kind of the 
I, w I wanted to do the India to China region. So this is every, all the currencies between India and China that are traded about the same or uh, as much. So you can see that uh, certainly China's currency is traded about twice as much as the Indian currency. Um, but, uh, so we're going to get into some few more details here. So, um, prior to doing all this research, I have checked out uh, something like 4,000 companies and kind of looked at all the data for the largest companies uh, in the world. And you can kind of see I've done a bunch of different graphs. So, I did a lot of homework here, um, but you can, t uh, those are some scatter plots. But we'll go back to that a little bit later, maybe. Um, and uh, basically, but here's the stock exchange volume. So essentially what we're trying to think about is uh, three factors here, right? So basically the currency transactions don't really match with the stock market numbers, which don't really match with the company numbers. I mean, a lot of things are made in Asia, but yet how do they buy and sell them if the currency doesn't match up? So there's some weird stuff basically uh, that's going on and maybe partly that uh, China owns just a lot of dollars and they've just kind of made a decision uh chinese government that they're going to use the dollar um and they don't mind it and it's not a big deal um but uh certainly uh, maybe it's not that simple so you can kind of see here uh in general this is kind of a made-up graph that it did so the stock market uh you know, it was basically 80% of the currency was in dollars, but now you see only about 46% of the total stock market globally um, is traded. Uh, so it's not really matching up in terms of the companies, and all this data should match up in my opinion, um, but it doesn't. Um, and you can kind of see these uh, stock exchanges, just the uh, New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ actually being two separate stock exchanges. And then you can see the Japanese exchange. So, uh, Basically, on the currency numbers, we saw that uh, if you look at these guys here, you can see uh, that the uh, yen is actually lower than the euro, and yet, uh, why doesn't the stock market numbers uh, match up? So you can see, actually, the uh, market capitalization in dollars while well, the Shanghai market. So it could be some weird stuff that we just don't quite understand about the Chinese economy. Uh, in terms of why these numbers don't match up, it would be uh, basically a great research project, great research paper in general, and uh, we're actually working on studying that right now as we talk. So uh, here's kind of like how this all works. So you basically have euro to euro or dollar to dollar, and or you can have uh, euro to dollar and so on. And this is kind of the exchange rate live in action right now. Really cool website. You can see this on TradingView. And you can see kind of the major currencies and what's going on. So you can see certain currencies going up or down and kind of the exchange rate uh, from one perspective or the other. All right. So uh, here you can see the dollar. Um, and then here you see how many euros you can get for the dollar. So uh, basically that's how it works for each one of these. And it's super interesting to kind of track what's going on uh, during the day uh, from this. Now, I don't know how live this is. It looks pretty live, but sometimes it's not. You can also do uh, Europe or Asia Pacific and the Middle East. Um, now, of course, we're trying to match up the uh, global uh, world indices with uh, the currency data, and that's not matching. This is a really handy website just for seeing uh, what's going on with all the global stock market. And you can go back to this page, excuse me, yeah, World Stock Exchanges. So I did some of my own math just to kind of calculate this, but uh, if you wanted to try to find which stock exchange it is, you can go here and then click on it here and then find out. So basically a graph like this will come up. This is kind of a custom one that I made. So I like to look at the volume here, but then I look at the price volume. So this is price times volume because the volume the volume needs to be included because it's not always correct, right? So you can see the correct line here. And then if you zoom in, you can kind of see what's been happening. And let's see if we can even get this to the max. Probably take a little while to load all that data. Uh, but uh, here you can kind of see the uh, price money flow and uh, RSI. It looks like this is one of the problems why this doesn't really work is because the volume wasn't really calculated properly until about the 1950s. Um, and then on the right here, you have a volume profile, which can be super helpful uh, to see, but this will give you the money flow, which I really like, and then just kind of independent of 
volume is the RSI. So it's nice to kind of compare these two, the RSI and money flow, if you can get the volume on there. So uh, sometimes you can't. So most of this data was uh, got from this uh, most traded currencies, and it looks like Wikipedia needs my help. I have donated to them before. They're great. And uh, yeah, so unfortunately, I'm not as rich as I wish. So I'm trying to study currency a little bit, I guess. Uh, but this is the most traded currencies according to uh, this source here. And it looks like a Bank of International. So maybe we'd have to even double check that. Um, and then here's the stock exchange list of stock exchanges uh, page. And I kind of had to grab this data, take out commas, and kind of study it a little bit on my own. So uh, now, list of countries by GDP. So one of the questions here uh, is that I took is, uh, uh, okay, so this is most traded currencies. Um, however, uh, if you grab the GDP data, well, why doesn't even that even starts to make the United States look smaller? So the GDP is not matching up with this is all in GDP of dollars, but yet the GDP of China is uh, huge. So maybe there's just a lot of internal transactions uh, being done in China that we don't quite understand. The Chinese are consuming a lot, even internally, but that's not really as far as imports or exports. Um, I mean, with all the billions of people that they have there, uh, you could imagine that would be the case. So that's probably what's why these numbers are a little bit weird. Uh, so the GDP numbers uh, by gross domestic product, I, I just don't understand why that wouldn't match up perfectly with the uh, currency uh, numbers, but that's maybe just a huge flaw in how the IMF, World Bank, and United Nations studies all this data. So again, we see uh, Japan here, uh, Germany, and that's a good number to keep in mind is that Germany is kind of uh, pretty ahead of the United Kingdom, at least for now. Uh, in terms of GDP, and we also kind of see that uh, with the uh, stock exchange and actually the currency, and uh, a lot of the stock exchanges are kind of done with Euro next in, uh, I believe it's close to Germany or in Germany, they have like a central bank there that uh, does a lot of stuff. So, but anyway, you can see Russia here being pretty big and uh, Australia, Mexico, Indonesia, and uh, Certainly the order of this uh, could be very important uh, to think about. So this is actually done in separate estimates and I don't even know if these estimates are correct. I've gone to these sources here and tried to re-download them and then I just grabbed this data and tried to use it again and did some kind of different things with it. So we're just gonna go quickly through all the major currencies and kind of see um, what's going on. So you can draw little lines here. Um, now I drew, drew a uh, price oscillator and I did three months versus 12. So this tells us where these major oscillations are and I'm just gonna go through and put a bunch of little uh, lines here. So that looked like a major one here, major one here, and then you can see also on the RSI. So this looked like a pretty major thing, but I kind of got to match it up with this pre-oscillator right about here. And I have to re-click on this, unfortunately. Hey. So it looks like right about there, right? So these are some big major time periods that we can kind of see also in the charts here. So basically uh, the Euro, uh, so first of all, today we're, this is the one-to-one -one ratio. So we can do a horizontal line and kind of track that on a one-to-one -one basis. Right, so this horizontal line. So basically it's one-to-one -one here, but right now, uh, if you trade a dollar for it, you get a little bit less than one. So Europe really started doing better than the dollar. Um, and if you remember this, uh, people, it was kind of a scary time and a funny time because uh, actually they started the euro and it was uh, initially better than the dollar and then there was a time frame where the uh, dollar was actually uh, better. So, and that has basically changed ever since 2002 and that's been 18 years. So uh, the euro uh, kind of gained a lot of value and then right around here, which actually it wasn't at this point, maybe it was definitive by here, but it looked like 
2008. So that was a pretty major point because in the financial crisis, uh, there was a whole change in things. So let's just put that in May, it looks like. Was a kind of, uh, but we can actually shift this a little bit to here, right? So the situation changed. So it basically got, had two little blips and then these couple blips. And then recently, right around here in June of 2014, another major problem for the euro. So what I like to do is even check Wikipedia and just do a search for the date and, and year and Wikipedia and just type in Europe and then find out what the news was, what was going on, and you can actually see the specific things. Um, but the oscillator really helps just to uh, kind of track where these normal oscillations are. So this all track should be around zero oscillation if it was just flat. Um, but you can see, uh, you know, basically the euro is doing better. So it's actually opposite because it's, uh, you know, just a little complicated. But anyway, so uh, here you can see the Indian rupee. So you can see this is kind of calm. You can't really see precisely where these problems are. But on this, let's draw some more lines here. So you can see right around there. Uh, so that was 1991 uh, was kind of the big point where the Indian rupee really started to fall apart and then from there on this is all maybe the other major part was 2009 and you can see uh, that in 2009 something good it was getting really bad and it's they probably just got so bad that they were just like well it's uh, got to get better at some point so and then right here being at a very definitive point so this is pretty much, I would say, 2011 was huge, right? So that was even probably more important than, or as important as this. So you can also change this to a log graph and you can see where these big changes are. So really early in the 1980s, there was a lot bigger. These are big changes because the, the currency was only worth about eight one dollar gave you eight rupees but today it's just getting way up there so you'll see that in asia this is what's been happening except for the uh, chinese currency so and here you got the chinese currency which has stayed about at eight which is what the indian currency was in the 1970s or 80s so you can see again there's a huge blip here uh in uh, 1994 where there was just Chinese currency went really bad and then it was lockstep. So that is a big question of years. So that's all the way 2006. And then finally things have been fluctuating. And this may be a huge question for China to think about is in 2014, right about in, I would say even here, February, right? So like, why is it suddenly getting worse in 2014? Um, that's a big question and it was actually looks like it was slightly uh, January 2014 right so and you can see basically we can look at this in terms of the coronavirus and actually it looks like the uh, Chinese currency has been getting better right so that might be a surprise um, but uh, anyway so uh, here's the Mexican peso and you also see some volume numbers here so I added a volume oscillator so here we can see uh, volume going up, right? And also uh, price here. So you can see that that actually, you know, more trades obviously would be good uh, for the peso. And in fact, it was good for the peso. So not always, sometimes there's a rush for uh, problems. So this is a huge point in uh, Mexican history just around here. So you could say that that was probably started right about there. So, and even shifted maybe even to there. So by uh, January, 2020, and uh, this was perhaps uh, coronavirus. So this is like the, so maybe you could say that in terms of Mexican economics, this was like the biggest event in uh, the last uh, decade. This is only 10 years, unfortunately, but let's see if we can get more. Uh, can't get any more data on this, so. Uh, but you can see the peso was about uh, 10 and then it kind of fluctuated up here and this was probably a really scary time uh, coronavirus just uh, really scared the currency and then now it's come back down to this uh, 
20 level, and that looked pretty stable, uh, actually, and it probably uh, should ge keep going down, but who knows what how these currency guys think. Um, and here's the Japanese currency, and this is a very important one to watch because you can see in the uh, currency ones that Japan is number... Wait a second, this is not currency. All right, so here's currency. So Japan is actually number three, right? So if we study this Japanese currency, we will probably understand a lot about uh, Asia. And it's nice that we have volume. And of course, we'd have volume because it's a very highly traded currency, and we can study that carefully. And you can see probably the coronavirus thing really devastated the currency here and just really went all over the place but actually it looks like it's just been getting better since uh, coronavirus and then just recently which is uh, this February things are starting to look bad so that would be a big question so right here um, is the big these are the two big changes in the history of this is like the last 20 or 30 years so you can see this point here and then perhaps another point right in this point so this is the start of the top and then the bottom and then you can kind of see maybe right about it here so these are three pretty important points so 2012 and you can see that the currency really was getting better and that all started perhaps back in the uh, around 2000 so around 2000 from there um which wasn't i guess 20 years ago but uh you know, a lot of things were getting better for Japan, actually. Um, and then, wow, 2012 is just really bad. And then something good happened here. So we'd have to look at the economy. And you can see this volume. The volume, anytime the volume's up, is good. So in general, it's saying the correction. A lot of people are wanting to trade the currency in those time frames. So here's Brazilian real, and uh, for some reason I couldn't get all this, but uh, I'll just go through these really quick, and you can go ahead and study these in more detail if you want. And here's the Russian currency. I've already got some little points that I study this on, so you can see uh, some interesting uh, things. I was curious about this before. So, And here's a Thai currency, and you can see that in general Thai currency has been getting better. That's a great sign. Thailand is a really surprise there's just a lot of pollution in bangkok um but uh it looks to me like the currency is slowly doing better and uh it looks like uh you know these uh it was it's they've actually taken their economy pretty seriously and it looks like it's floated at least for a while here uh, but then the rsi can tell you a little bit more detail in here um, about what's going on if you need so that's why I use it as well but and then here's uh, the uh, Arupa and I believe uh, this is Indonesian currency here and I just added this one because there's a lot of people in Indonesia a lot of islands and it's a really cool currency to think out Vietnamese currency would also be interesting uh, I should add that but Here's a Philippine peso and just a couple little, I was looking at more recent years here, but you can see some uh, timed frames. And then we're just going to close out looking back at the stock market. So obviously, if you're buying and selling stocks, that depends on a currency. Um, and this is actually a global way to look at all the uh, industries. So I basically grabbed this by um, x-axis is market capitalization. So these are some of the largest companies in the world, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Facebook. And the uh, y-axis is in sales. So you can see that Amazon has more sales uh, than Apple, but uh, the profit, and there's different factors uh, that mean uh, why is some company. But in general, it should be that their sales, if their sales are more, their market capitalization. So it should be pretty much like this, but you can kind of see it's uh, not exactly like that. So I did graph uh, these things here to kind of look at that so you can see uh, you might want to look at some of these graphs to say uh, percent profit versus sales. So you can see of the top companies in the world, what is their percent profit and how does that all work? And there's just a ton of graphs here. And I think I even have more graphs at the bottom here. Or do I? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but uh, yeah, I guess it's not in here for some reason. But uh but yeah, the, these graphs can kind of tell you uh, profit in billions, sales in billions, and you can see 
percent profit so you can see kind of a mid range of percent profit about 10 percent um but uh and that should kind of make sense 10 percent is an easy number to calculate so there's another way to look at this as well with uh sales and average volume so these are the uh, amounts of volume traded uh and the sales on the x-axis so you can see walmart having a lot of uh, sales but not a whole lot of volume traded um, here but and then here's what's been happening over the last year so this has really kind of confused me to be honest I thought coronavirus was just gonna stay bad for a while and maybe you did too but maybe you didn't maybe you just uh, really invested in something and you probably made a ton of money and it looks like Apple Microsoft Google all these big companies have made a ton of money and you can also graph this by forward PE and you can kind of see the difference well, their price to earnings ratio isn't so great, uh, but they've still been doing well. So anyway, so this all goes back to currency. So anyway, so uh, I hope you've had some, wow, I can't even see myself on this. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Hi. Uh, but uh, basically these are the uh, graphs here. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. I still have a lot to learn about uh, currency and just studying everything involved. So I uh, hope that this has been interesting uh, other than me fiddling around with the camera. Um, but there is a lot of work here, I would say, in just uh, in general looking at each country in specific and kind of comparing that to the uh, you know like where there uh, there's also a lot of uh, maps that you can do on the harvard atlas of economic complexity which i use all the time i wanted to kind of focus primarily on just the currency and see what's going on um but anyway i hope you enjoyed this uh, let me know if you got some ideas on currency that you think i should look at or study a little bit more thanks a lot Ciao.